Yeah, thank you so much, Philly. Uh, thank you for the presentation of founders. This uh, uh, excellence program sounds excellent. I think so too. <laughs> Uh, so uh, let me share my screen with you. I hope it's the correct one. Yes, yeah, seems like that. So welcome everybody. Um, I will try to speak slower than I usually do because we have time. And in case if you have questions, please just uh, let me know. I will try to do my best. So today we are gonna be talking about several tools that we are using for conference, for digital interaction, as well as for feedback. And I'm going to give you uh, three examples, go a little bit in detail, and we will do an exercise as well. And in the end, uh, there is a, um, a questionnaire similar to what has Feely done with the Zoom, but I will use uh, another tool for that. Well, the uh, digital tools for conference and meetings have been around there for a while already. As you can see, um, I've researched some basic information when uh, these companies were uh, founded and where they originated. Um, and uh, before I go into more detail, I have to say that there are formal and informal tools in our university, uh, depending on the subject that you are using the tools for. Maybe you would prefer to use Big Blue Button, WebEx uh, for even higher security. However, since Zoom is uh, uh, indeed, it, it is a proposal of the university because we do have the UniBeve account for it, I'm going to focus today on Zoom. Um, there is a free version. So if you don't, uh, if you want to use the tools for your own purposes and you would not like to take the domain of the university, you can also register your own account on Zoom. And until uh, the, um, until you have 100 people, you can use it for free. However, the session is going to be 40. Uh, minutes long and then it, it is going to break so you will have to open another one um, and the yearly uh, license uh, for up to uh, up to 100 people but for unlimited sessions is uh, gonna be around 150. Uh, big blue button in contrast to zoom uh, um, it is an open source, it has open source code and hosted at GitHub. Uh, basically, you can change the code and ex in case if you are a developer, of course, or if you're working with someone who has experience in software development, they can actually access the code and fit it uh, to the needs of your uh, team. Uh, yes, WebEx is uh, the oldest um, online conference uh, platform uh, and it will take uh, 170 euro for year to have uh, around 50 members. So it is uh, pretty expensive, I would say. And last but not least, if you are a big fan of uh, GDPR and you want to stay um, on a very on a very uh, clean side of data compliance you can use the German platform uh, EduDeep uh, and it is very expensive therefore um, indeed it offers a lot of uh, functions as well as well as every other platform that I've mentioned they do have different functionalities. 
Uh, however, EduDeep is expensive uh, and it is going to take 70 or around 70 euro for month. Anna, can I say something to yeah. add? Perfect. Yeah, so for everyone from UDBV, um, we can kind of use Zoom. We can use all of this. But if you're gonna if you're gonna use it for like like Anna says like for your team team meetings or whatever that's not a problem. But if you're gonna use it with external people from the uni, important meetings or events like this one, you should get in contact maybe in the uni with Datenschutz and ask really okay. So what do I have to do to use Zoom? So we are using Zoom because we have uh, the declaration, a policy policy declaration, we put it on the inscription also in, in Predix. So there's a full process that you gotta do to use Zoom, but you can. And then big blue button and edit it because for the German version, they have a uh, hosting in Europe. That's the thing, it's easier. So can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, gone for a couple of... Yeah, I think it's my internet. Sorry, that's it. Gotta go on. Thank you, Philly. I'm always happy when you have comments. Now, my is also unstable. Uh, so uh, let us talk about Zoom. Uh, just as uh, we mentioned, you can uh, use the Zoom from the university or you can sign up uh, and create an account on, on the cloud. So use Zoom in your browser. Um, as you know, there are features in Zoom. So the breakout rooms, recording, polls, questions, reactions, and of course, chat. Um, and uh, uh, what I like about Zoom is that it is easy to uh, um, integrate it with the uh, other digital tools that I will be talking about uh, today. Uh, so, uh, as you know, it is a bit problematic to show how uh, Zoom works while having the live session on. Therefore, we made a screenshot for you to show you um, where is the control field. It is there in the bottom. As you can see, uh, there are Umfragen where you can ask the questions just like Philly did in the beginning of our session. Um, and uh, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. You can open the breakout sessions, so you can post reactions, and of course you can record the sessions. Uh, now, there are more advanced functions uh, in uh, Zoom, however, According to my experience, this has always been uh, enough for me. And I'm very happy with how it works. Now, let us go to the collaboration tools. When I talk about collaboration tools, I mean online whiteboards. As an agile coach, it is important for me to use my space uh, and to have the notes, to be able to group the notes. And since the uh, uh, beginning of uh, Corona, uh, we've lost this possibility to do it in real life. However, I am just in love with this collaboration tools because it is even better than doing it in real life sometimes because you can work at the same time with many people in different locations and get everybody's opinions on. So, um, First uh, is Miro. As you can see, they uh, all the tools were founded approximately in the same time, and they're actually quite similar. Um, I have a Miro. Miro was founded in Amsterdam and in San Francisco by actually um, a Russian guy who studied in Moscow 
uh, but moved uh, abroad long time ago. So I never knew this. And yesterday when I was preparing for our workshop today, I've noticed that. And uh, uh, yeah, I was quite surprised. Uh, and Mural was also founded in San Francisco also in 2011. And I have to say that they are pretty similar. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if it, maybe at one point it was one team and uh, then there grew into two startups, but those are just speculations. Let's get back to the facts. Uh, so up to 50 members uh, in Miro, um, you can have unlimited boards for 150 euro per year. Otherwise, the number of the boards you can create is going to be limited, as well as the number of uh, participants. However, for very small teams, you can always try use the uh, free versions of those uh, tools. Uh, um, and uh, uh, last uh, tool that I want to mention is concept board. It's uh, German. Uh, and um, it is uh, um, as well uh, GDPR compliant. Uh, um, and uh, um, yeah, it charges per as so all the tools, um, both tools, mural and concept board, they charge per member. Um, and they have unlimited uh, boards. Yes, Filipa, please. Yes, I use the hand, see? Uh, question for you, so everyone can know, uh, because we use a lot of these tools, which one do you prefer and why? What, which one do you use for your workshops? I use Miro for uh, uh, the workshops. We are gonna use one, uh, we're gonna use it today. I've never used concept board, so this is something new for me. However, uh, concept board is, bit different. It offers more solutions for teachers and for education, while Miro and Mural are more creative and I would say more business oriented. Um, and the functionalities are a little bit different. Let us talk about uh, Miro. And you can create an account. I put the website over here. Uh, my favorite features are sticky notes of various format, uh, uh, creating tables I like. Uh, I like uh, drawing connections between the tables and between the sticky notes to show the dependencies. Uh, and it is also to create, uh, if possible, to create different working areas. So if you fix it on the whiteboard, then you can move it, drag and drop it, uh, and it is as well compatible uh, with the uh, Jira we are going to talk about later. So uh, um, without further ado, I need to switch my screens in order to get to a uh, mirror board. So here we are, and as you can see, people have been experimenting wildly with various functions. So we have a picture, we have some sophisticated uh, process diagrams, uh, if, there, if there are thus charts, perfect, and uh, planes, and uh, test cards. Uh, um, uh, so people liked it, uh, and uh, yeah, as you can see, you can if you're gonna drag things, the arrows are going to are going to follow. And I see that Monica and Karsten they also did a space, so like a like a frame. And uh, uh, I'm gonna show you how you can move the frame. So just double click on it. Usually it works. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, it's going to be moving all together. But if you want to move a table like this, it's usually problematic because uh, the uh, sticky notes are not going to move together with it, if you know what I'm saying. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe not. 
oh yeah you see there is once uh, behind it that is not moving together now if you want to solve this problem you need to create a frame around it and i'm going to do it right away you can also lock it so now uh, if you try to move it, it should be moving all together. Let's try. No, now you see it's not moving anything at all. Um, yes, uh, but uh, please don't give up. Please play around with it. And I can promise you it is going to pay back. So let's talk about project management tools. Uh, so uh, I think that it is important first to learn how to use the basic tools such as Miro and afterwards uh, you can transfer to using project management tools. Please keep in mind that the tools that I'm mentioning here are mainly suitable for agile project management work, not necessarily waterfall. Uh, as you can see, uh, the tools uh, uh, were created in different periods of time. And uh, the first one that I became aware of, to be honest, was Trello board. Uh, because Trello is a very simple method to organize your work into a Kanban style. So the tables that you were just creating in Miro board with on progress, uh, take, with on progress uh, and uh, testing and done, these fields you can basically copy and use in Trello board. Uh, it's free for less than 10 users uh, and it is free for unlimited uh, boards uh, and uh, um, Trello was actually acquired by uh, Atlassian company in 2017 and Atlassian is the company which owns Jira software as well as Confluence communication platform. Uh, and unlike Trello, Jira is more suitable for organizing projects uh, um, that are running in sprints. So it is even more agile than uh, Trello board. Uh, it is not that easy to learn, but you don't need to learn all the functions at once. It is free for less than 10 users as well. It works uh, absolutely fine, the free version. I've been checking it recently. Uh, however, uh, we have um, a Jira from the university. So it is, a, um, it is a software that you can officially use. You can write Rechenzentrum and they will create an account for you. So if you want to start using Jira, that would be the first step for you. Now, the two other tools I would like to mention is Asana. Perhaps some of you have heard about it. There is no free plan uh, for it. Uh, um, there is no free time plan for it. So you need to pay for extra functions uh, if you would like to. And last but not least is the Factro, a German tool, which is also free for less than 10 users. And of course it is GDPR compliant. Now let's talk more about Jira. Uh, as I mentioned, you can uh, uh, contact the Rechenzentrum and they will create an account for you, or you can register uh, and have your own uh, cloud account. Uh, Philippa is going to send the presentation afterwards. 
Uh, initially, this software is most suitable for IT project management, but it is adaptable for any kind of high complexity project with multiple stakeholders, like for example, founders. We are also using uh, Jira in order to organize our projects. Um, so you can use this tool, you can use starting this tool when you understand the subtasks of your project. That is why I was telling you uh, about Miro and using Miro before Jira, because in Miro board, you can fine grain the assignments, you can collect the ideas, you can visualize, create mind maps, understand what are the fine grained assignments. And uh, uh, after that, uh, get them into uh, Jira software. So the main features are Kanban boards, Scrum boards, ticket and system, timeline creation and prioritization. And uh, uh, Jira is compatible with many tools, uh, not only the ones that I mentioned today, like Zoom, or Miro, but as well as with customer management systems such as HubSpot. Yeah, and I mentioned that uh, um, the company Atlassian is also in charge of Confluence. Therefore, Confluence is also integratable with Jira. Filipa? Yeah, so question also for you, but for everybody. Um, because I don't know if everyone here really know uh, what's the difference, for example, between agile programs, um, agile methods and waterfall, for example. And you talked about uh, like ticketing, you know, and scrum. And I don't know if everybody is so familiarized with it. So if you could just maybe first explain why should we use Jira? So we, like Anna said, we use Jira and Founders works perfectly when we have like great big teams with a lot of projects going on at the same time. So maybe you can explain why Jira and why not the other ones? Uh, because and for what uh, kind of projects, sorry. <laughs> for what kind of uh, projects? So with projects which have uh, goals that are constantly changing, uh, uh, projects that have uh, uh, different components and uh, different features that need to be uh, prioritized uh, together. So let me share my screen with you and I will show you. Perhaps uh, uh, it is going to be clearer, but I think that to really understand that in uh, uh, depth, it's good uh, if uh, uh, you guys sign up for the um, uh, Agile Project Management Workshop uh, in our Entrepreneurial Excellence Program. Uh, when uh, you want to uh, assess or vote on something with your team, or maybe you want to have uh, um, an online party, excuse me, somehow didn't work correct, but... I think here we are, yeah. Uh, so uh, you can use uh, uh, tools like uh, Mentimeter, AHA Slides, uh, uh, or Kahoot uh, to uh, uh, create online quizzes, online interactive presentations. Uh, uh, so as you can see, the tools are pretty new. So this is the latest generation of the collaborative digital tools that I have come across in the past, uh, let's say, five years. Um, and uh, um, unfortunately, all of them uh, are not for free. So there are free um, options, but it is uh, usually for a limited number of participants, as well as a limited number of uh, uh, questions. Um, so um, as you can see, there are no tools from the US, which is, uh, I don't know, interesting enough. 
uh, and uh, uh, the one that I have purchased uh, is AHA slides. Um, Mentimeter, uh, I think that maybe we will get a license from the university sooner or later. Uh, but so far, um, I've been only using AHA slides. Mentimeter is very similar and it is also very good. So I hope that we uh, will uh, uh, have it. And a uh, Kahoot is uh, um, a pretty uh, expensive. Uh, however, it offers more variety of uh, solutions. Uh, uh, so um, it has more service oriented software. Um, if you are a teacher, uh, for example, Kahoot could be more interesting. Uh, without further ado, I want to tell you more about the AHA slides. Uh, so you can create the polls and quizzes, uh, word clouds, submit and vote on the uh, ideas. Uh, and uh, I suggest uh, that we try it out and have a small feedback session. Let me share the link with you. Uh, so please go to this link via your mobile phone. Second, sorry. So why mobile phone and not the browser? Oh, well, you can also choose to to uh, have it in a browser, but so far I've been uh, uh, somehow using it uh, through my phone for voting because everybody has one computer and I have to share my screen with you. Okay. Uh, need to type it. Yeah. Take your time. And meanwhile, I, I'm just showing you the interface of the AHA slides and what you can do with it. So you can create a, a different type of slides with multiple questions, with image choice, with word clouds. Uh, uh, you can have games uh, and uh, animations. Uh. Oh, no, it's a uh, slides for free, or you have to pay something so here this. Uh, to to uh, uh, we you can have it for free for a limited amount of participants and if you want to host up to mm -hmm. 50 live participants uh, you can uh, um, uh, you have to pay 60 euro per year for it um, but i mean uh, regarding the slides number can you create uh, a lot of slides or just yeah, yeah, you can create unlimited number of slides uh, if you purchase this uh, for 50 live participants, then it's no problem. So you can create as many slides as you want. And as you can see over here, why I, I, why I ask you to use it on the, on the phone, because you can see uh, if I click on the participants view, this is how I'm going to see it. So this is approximately how you um, see it on your phone so you can have the reaction and uh, you can submit your uh, response. Uh, to show you how it works, I need to um, present it to you. So this is usually, this is the moment when I'm asking you to vote. I've done it a little bit ahead of the time. Um, and uh, uh, now we are discussing, so did you learn something new today? And uh, you can see that there are reactions, uh, wow reactions. I can see uh, that there are voters and uh, uh, the number of uh, participants. Uh, let's go to the next slide.
So yeah, and uh, now uh, over here, you can write, uh, type in the words. Yeah, exactly. And uh, um, why else? Why else? Let's have like two, two more, two more. Yeah, nice. And basically, now if uh, I want to, I could uh, make a um, vote on it. I will not risk it right now, but uh, basically uh, besides this layout, there is a, a new option of how you can vote on, uh, on issues. Which ones do you think are the most important? Now, next question. What would you like to learn more about? Voting. Now, I think that we, we, we are done. So people who would like to learn none of them, please let us know which tools you would like to learn more about. And uh, the last one. How would you describe today's session in one word? You see, this is pretty beautiful. I think that it is uh, um, entertaining and uh, the fact that you can use your mobile phone, I don't know, gives, gives even a certain edge uh, towards the process. Like, wow, someone said it was relaxing. Well, I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for participating. Uh, now uh, you are able to see so the whole votes and how it is. Um, yeah, and you can also share it afterwards so you can publish it and uh, uh, you can uh, share it uh, with your uh, uh, colleagues. There are uh, always some new features uh, that uh, uh, I'm not even aware of. But as you can see, there, uh, this is a new one, Brainstorm. There is a Q&A. Um, and uh, let me check out the Brainstorm. Uh, yes, so here you can vote on the ideas if you submit the ideas uh, like, uh, like here. Uh, after everybody has submitted the idea, uh, it is possible to vote on it uh, right away. So not uh, wasting uh, any time. Anyways, uh, this is, I guess that uh, uh, this is it uh, from my side. I will just switch uh, quickly to uh, the presentation. So we have done this. And uh, uh, if you want to, you can book uh, um, a personalized workshop uh, with me where we are going to take a look uh, at your project in the university as the Wissenschaftliche uh, Mitarbeiterin or as um, a 
potential founder if you are if you have an idea and you're working on it i can help you identify the priorities and just help you get started to, as uh, as much as I can. So I have expertise in business model generation, in uh, uh, pitching, uh, finding investors, getting connected with the, uh, the uh, community. And I also have a great team um, as a team members, such as, for example, Feely, who is a master of disaster. And I can always turn to Feely when I feel that uh, uh, I need support. Uh, and so if you contact me, it means that you are also contacting all the founders and we will help you with our joint expertise. Uh, so now I would like to give my word to Feely. Thank you, Anna. So thanks a lot. I already put it in the reactions and I saw in the, in the chat uh, thank every thank you everybody uh, for feedback uh, also, and we also because we're like right on time. I just want we wanted to give you some extra features. So can you, yeah, master of disaster. Yeah, so I'm in master in disaster management actually. So it's true, <laughs> and uh, this is only three extra features that you can use. One is LinkedIn Learning. So I guess you all know LinkedIn and LinkedIn has this feature of learning and they have courses also. Courses are very good because they are business oriented and professional. So they are shorter. If you go, for example, to Coursera or online courses from universities, it's a lot of hours, a lot of weeks that you have to study, which is also good. And I'm going to talk about it. But LinkedIn Learning goes right to the point with real experiences and real um people who have like lived it in the businesses and you can go and take the course, the full course and get a certificate at the end when you have finished the course. There are no exercises or anything. It's just like the videos and we have free access of the uni. So I'm going to share it to you with the presentation. You just write to the um, Rechenzentrum and they can uh, set an account for you and it's free of charge because normally you have to pay for it. Another one is TEDx, like our TEDx event. They are also um, Cost those uh, free talks uh, online about so, so many subjects. And they are a very good way to start your day to get some inspiration in either entrepreneurship or design, technology, new ideas, uh, society, um, coaching, or whatever. So I would recommend always start your day with a TEDx talk with your coffee. It's a very great way to start your day and your week. And then last but not least, like I said, Coursera, there's also EDX or other of this called MOOCs. MOOCs is Massive Online Open Course. And it's different universities around the world who have set up their courses, but online. So you can find out courses for different agencies, but also Yale, Harvard, uh, Unternehmertum zum Beispiel, uh, like for example, so many big universities have put their courses there. Their courses can be either for free and you can only audit, and go and go through the course and everything. But if you wanna get a certificate also at the end, you have to pay. So it's both um, options. This is a very good way also to learning, let's say new tools, entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, or even math, new languages. So everything it's in this tools. Exactly, so now I'm gonna read on the chat, Miro, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Monica. So a lot of um, a feedback for Miro and AHA slides. And yeah, I think that's it from us, Anna. We don't have any more slides, right? Yeah, we are done, Philly. Perfect, yay, so high five. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna send it to you all the presentation that Anna did with a couple of print screens of the exercises you also did. And any other information, you can find it on the slides or you can write to Anna or me. Is there any more questions? I don't think so. Perfect. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for showing your faces too. And have a great day. See you soon, I hope. See you soon. Thank everybody. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.